I'm Hugh Collingborn, Director of Technology with Sapphire Steel Software. This series of videos on Ruby programming is based on a free ebook called The Little Book of Ruby, which you can download from our website, www.sapphiresteel.com, along with the source code of the sample programs. In these videos, I'll be demonstrating some of the most important features of Ruby, but I won't be going into as much detail as you'll find in the book, so be sure to read the text to fill in the gaps. I'll be using the Ruby in Steel IDE for Visual Studio, but you can use any IDE you like, or even a simple text editor. Before you begin, you'll need to have Ruby installed on your computer. You'll find download links in the ebook, or you can use the installer from the Sapphire Steel website. If you follow Chapter 1 of the Little Book of Ruby, you'll see that we start out in the traditional way with a Hello World program. You can either run this from the command prompt by navigating to the folder containing hello world.rb and entering ruby space hello world.rb at the prompt or if you're using ruby in steel load hello world.rb from the solution explorer and press control f5 to run it inside the interactive ruby console as you can see, you can get started with Ruby very quickly without having to learn much syntax, and in a small program like this, without having to write anything like as much code as you would if using a language such as, such as Java, say, or, or C++. To display a string, you just have to enter puts, followed by a string delimited by either single or double quotes. If you load up the Hello Name program, you'll see that in a similar way you can use gets to get a string entered by the user. You can then assign the string to a variable, which in this case I've called name. In Ruby, you don't have to pre-declare variables or assign specific types to them. Ruby deduces the variable types from the data, here a string, with which that variable is initialized. Both puts and gets are functions or methods, as is print, which is similar to puts, apart from the fact that it doesn't add a new line or carriage return at the end. Notice that when I call puts, with a string argument, it's left to me to decide whether or not to use brackets around the argument. Many programmers prefer to omit brackets, feeling, I suppose, that the less syntax the better. There are some circumstances, though, when omitting brackets can make your code ambiguous or difficult to understand, and in general, I prefer to make fairly free use of brackets, but ultimately the choice is yours. It's worth noting that strings enclosed by double quotes are a bit special. You can put into them bits of Ruby code between curly brackets preceded by a hash. When the program is run, these bits of embedded code are evaluated. OK, so let's run this to see an example. Now, first it prompts me to enter my name. So I enter my name, Hugh. Now, you can see in my code that what's happening here is that the code assigns the user input to the name variable. And this variable is placed inside the string here. When that sp string is displayed, the variable is evaluated and its value, that's the string that I entered, my name, is what is displayed. This only applies to double quoted strings. Single quoted strings do not evaluate embedded code. You'll find many more examples of embedded evaluation in the little book of Ruby. In the next video, I'll explain the basics of Ruby's object orientation.